I am happy to introduce Dr. Ben Diesfeld. Ben is the co-founder and managing director of Limbo's Medical Technologies. He's a physicist by training. He um, completed his physics degree in 2006 at the uh, Friedrich Schiller University in Jena. Afterwards, worked at the at a startup where he co-invented computer-guided laser surgery devices for ophthalmology. When accepting a position in a clinical laboratory in 2013, he learned about the huge potential and the challenges of diagnosing rare diseases using NGS. This led him to create an independent enterprise to bring together software and real-world evidence in order to solve the puzzles of genetic diseases. His presentation today is about the importance of automation and quality control, especially for whole exome analysis. So the title of the talk is Don't Waste a Moment on Manual QC. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, Ivan, for the introduction. I will start the session with a rather basic topic of NGS, quality control. We have been working with a number of high-throughput laboratories over the past few years. We assisted in onboarding existing NGS assays, establishing new assays and troubleshooting puzzling results and diagnostics. All of this led us to design and launch a new quality control component in Barbers at the end of the last year. In this presentation, I will show you how important quality control is in diagnostics and how Barbers supports you in these aspects. As always, we put a lot of emphasis on automation. And this is exactly why I chose the title, Don't Waste a Moment, on Manual QC. Barvis is more than just a variant interpretation tool. It allows you to capture all metadata related to your genomics data sets. For example, information about the wet lab process or the sequencing QC data that is generated by bioinformatics, family relations between patients, and of course, clinical information about patients. I will explain in more detail how this structured data management can be used to facilitate quality control. You can list at least three different values of quality control for a diagnostic lab. First, good quality control helps you to enhance productivity. It makes the performance of your processes transparent and gives you insight where optimization is possible. From a diagnostic point of view, the monitoring of variability across samples or across sequencing runs is extremely important. Good quality control also allows you to establish new assays in a short time frame. Second, quality control is necessary to demonstrate that your assay once validated, is performed within validated parameters. Acceptance criteria of those parameters will be essay-specific or application-specific. Third, and this is probably the most important value for a diagnostics lab, quality control helps you to quickly identify issues that may cause misinterpretation. Another critical issue is that diagnostic labs must reliably and quickly identify sample mix-ups or contamination of samples. Let's think about how the ideal quality work control workflow would look like. In an efficient laboratory, you will want to place quality control steps before every critical and expensive step. The larger your essays become, the more time consuming and therefore expensive the data review and reporting becomes. You will want the quality control to be a gatekeeper of the time consuming review. You will also want the quality control to feed immediate feedback to the relevant steps in the wet lab, something along the lines, the sequencing instrument needs maintenance, or the hybridization period must be longer. Last but not least, international guidelines require labs to consider new evidence at regular intervals and update reports accordingly. Let's start with the technical quality control checks that are put in place before data is reviewed. Barvis provides you with a dashboard showing quality metrics from all your NGS sequencing runs. Every row in this view represents a sequencing run and the underlying data is linked to the individual clinical data sets. Barvis therefore provides you with a traceability when you ask the question, for example, what was the quality of the sample that we sequenced six months ago? In this overview, you can also quickly see if any of the samples did not meet acceptance criteria 
and what kind of acceptance criteria were missed. You can directly navigate to a detailed view by clicking on the number in one of those columns. Specific acceptance ranges can be set for virtually any NGS quality metric. Acceptance criteria can be kit specific or application specific. Typically, acceptance criteria can also be defined in the process of validating an assay. Since we are providing validation as a service to our customers, the Varvis team can guide you when setting these parameters. When jumping into the details of a sequencing run, you can walk through the different sections of the quality control data. Varvis makes it easy for you to focus on the important items by highlighting which sections need review. For example, you will see a badge on every section where samples fail to meet acceptance criteria. While there is a wealth of quality metrics that we cover, I would like to focus on one of the most important features when you think about minimizing the risk of misdiagnosis in the lab. All major international guidelines require that laboratories implement sample tracking methods in order to avoid mix-up of samples. That means while you're performing your regular diagnostic workflow, the guidelines recommend that you perform a second independent workflow for genotyping purposes. In the end, this enables you to compare the genotypes and ensure that patient samples match. Apart from the costs for the independent laboratory workflow, the comparison of the results may be quite time consuming. Barvis makes this easy for you by automatically matching your clinical samples with genotyping samples. This view shows the results of matching clinical samples with NGS-based genotyping data. First of all, like in any of these views, Barvis clearly indicates which sections of this report need review. Every row in this report corresponds to a genomic coordinate where the genotypes of the clinical sample and the genotyping assay are compared. In this example, something obviously has gone wrong. The detected nucleotides do not match. In the second row, the nucleotide matches, but the sample is homozygous at this position, while the genotyping is not. This is another kind of mismatch that Varvis reports. In the last row, Varvis shows that it cannot determine a result because the clinical assay does not cover this position at all. This may be a quality issue or the design of the clinical assay does not include all genotyping coordinates. As in every tabular view in Varvis, it is very easy to filter your view to exactly those entries that are relevant. You can easily create filter buttons for various purposes. As you can see, in case of a rare mismatch, you can drill down to the relevant information with very few clicks. Now let's turn to another aspect of quality control that has significant impact on the diagnosis of patients. How can we efficiently track changing evidence for variant classification? If you remember, ClinVar celebrated the one millionth submission to its database. If you're familiar with ClinVar, you are probably aware that with every single submission, the classification of a variant may change. At about the same time, an article was published in Genetics and Medicine, once again emphasizing that medical reports should be updated at regular intervals if clinical evidence changes. Given the large amount of clinical evidence that is generated every day and the large number of patients that undergo clinical diagnostics, you may ask, how should we possibly do that? In our mind, this is only possible using the assistance of software. As you may know, ClinVar generates a release of its data once every month. We import these data releases into our centralized annotation service, Alexis. Varvis then in turn uses Alexis to annotate variants in your daily routine diagnostic workflow. You have the opportunity to update variant annotations in Varvis if new data becomes available. We have now added a feature in Varvis that uses the records of all variants that you have ever found in your samples and generates an update report of ClinVar annotations that focuses on your variants. 
This is an example of this update report. Varvis provides a view with an entry for each updated variant and for each case this variant was found in. Such a list is generated every month. In this example, the variant had not been present in the previous ClinVar release. The new classification in ClinVar is pathogenic and the variant had not been part of any medical report in Varvis. You can review the previous classification and the updated classification in ClinVar, as well as any classifications in your own Varvis database. This report works like a task list. You can mark interesting items. You can jump directly into the cases and review updated information. You can also discard an entry by checking it off. We hope that this feature allows you to keep track of changes in ClinVar with ease. We plan to extend this feature to other data sources to enhance your ability to consider all updated clinical evidence. As you can see, we are very much focused on automation of tasks, compliance with guidelines and regulations and with facilitating interpretation of genomic data. We are publishing articles about these topics at regular intervals on our blog. Make sure to check it out.